the eternity of Christ. But it is important to do so. Why? Because our mind works in a such a fashion, there is a tendency, because of the birth of Jesus, to somehow relegate Him, His entrance into history as the beginning of His works. And that is not true. I have heard so many people speak about the Old Testament as almost the domain of God the Father. That's absolutely ridiculous. He was with God. He was God when the world began. When you look into the Old Testament, and you look at the Old Testament, through the teachings of the New, you find Jesus Christ on absolutely every page. Not simply predicted, but working. I personally believe, and it's founded upon Scripture, and, and most theologians, conservative, would totally agree that everything God's done in the sphere of creation, He has done through His Son. He created the world through His Son. He sustains the world through His Son. The revelations of God in the New and Old Testament are through His Son. He saves the world through His Son. He will judge the world through His Son. The Old Testament is not void of the Son. The Son is all over the Old Testament. We see this culminating in the greatest revelation of God in the Old Testament. Hands down, Isaiah 6. The closest anyone ever comes to giving a description of God. Isaiah 6, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. John tells us in chapter 12 that that was the Son. So he's not an upstart God. He doesn't enter into history just at the moment of the incarnation. God's works, all his works, have been done through the Son. And that adds to the supreme, exalted place of the Son prior to His incarnation. Now let's go on. And the Word was with God. A reference to two very important aspects of the relationship which existed between the Father and the Son throughout all of eternity. First of all, their unity. The Father and Son existed in perfect fellowship. The fact that the Son was always with the Father denotes both equality and intimacy. It would be proper to translate the phrase, and the Word was face to face with God, denoting the intimate and personal fellowship, communion and delight which existed between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important to let us know His exalted pre-existent state. It's important to let us know that He is God, equal with God. But it becomes excruciatingly important when we think about his kinesis or self-emptying or his incarnation. When we think about him always being with God and then becoming man and then become even forsaken of God on that cross. You see, you and I don't miss let's say we don't miss being billionaires. Most of you didn't get up sad today thinking, man, I really miss being a billionaire. Because you've never been a billionaire. One thing about going to third world countries, you, you, you go there and if you're naive, you sit there and you go into the jungle and you see these little children and you, you think, oh, these poor children, all that they miss and they just, they don't know what they miss. They've never seen any. They've never been in a store. And actually, they're happier than our children. They say they don't have a clue what they miss. You, you didn't get up this morning going, man, I really miss being the strongest man in the universe. You've never been that. Oh, man, I remember the day when I could run the, you know, a 40 and, and 4.2. Four seconds. No, I, I don't remember that day and I don't miss it. 
likewise, but infinitely more. You can't understand, and you've got to stay up at night and think about this, you can't understand what it was like for the Son to be separated from the Father. Because He was always with Him, face to face with Him. Hardest thing about traveling and preaching is not travel, it's not airports, it's not preaching, it's not people getting mad at you. It's, it's not being with your family. It kills you. It literally kills you. It, but there's just no way for us to understand, but I want you to work at it for the rest of your life. He was with the Father, face to face with Him. The fact that he, he submitted to coming to this earth was amazing. But then, to be forsaken is beyond anything we could ever understand. But you can't understand the cross apart from it. You can't understand the cross apart from it. But also it shows us their distinction. The Father and the Son are not the same person. He was with God. Okay, He was God, but He was with God which indicates that there is a distinction, that there are persons involved here. They are of the same divine essence, but they are two real distinct persons who exist in perfect communion or fellowship together with the Holy Spirit. John Trapp writes, a distinct person, yet coessential and co-eternal. B.B. Warfield writes, eternally subsisting alongside of and in communion with God, the word is yet not a separate being over against God. In some deep sense, distinct from God, he is at the same time, in some high sense, identical with God. Let's talk about mystery. But it's there. It is there. I love this statement where he says, in some deep sense, distinct from God, he is at the same time, in some high sense, identical with God. Robert Raymond, on the Trinity, in his systematic theology, does an exceptional job. Although the phrase, the Word was with God, is shrouded and full of mystery, it does reveal some of the most remarkable truths in Scripture. For all eternity, before any worlds were made, God was in a perfect state of blessedness, contentment, and joyful fellowship, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They communed in a co-eternal and co-equal relationship and were each other's delight, joy, and satisfaction. They had no need of heavens, worlds, angels, or men. Such things were not created because of divine need, but to be recipients into which the superabundance of God might flow. He had no need of even a heaven. No need of angels. <coughs> perfect relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but created.